Hello, my name is Chris and you are now entering the Alone Zone. So I was supposed to do a follow-up on the tragic death of China Joan Lauer. The reason why I did not is my SD card corrupted. I had made a video, but it corrupted us too with this other camera that I recently got in the last few months. I figure those memory cards or SD cards were about five, six years old, so probably why they corrupted and I've used them in multiple cameras over the years so maybe that's why so luckily for me I, SD cards are cheap now I wasn't able to get a big one but I got a four gigabyte one for ten dollars which I guess Iceland's not that cheap but apparently they used to be a lot more uh, so I actually got two for ten dollars um, so I guess it's okay but uh, yeah, I'm not going to re-record that video. Um, the video I did before was so good. The second video, I could never recapture that magic. So I decided to myself, you know what, my initial reaction, I will clarify that I was wrong. She did not die. I initially thought she might have committed suicide because she was so depressed over the fact she could not uh, do what she wanted to do and, and be back in front of her fans. But turns out by reading you know tweets and, and and hearing from people who actually knew her she wasn't that way so my reaction has changed to I believe she just died of a broken heart years of rejection you know she's like me rejected from birth but she became famous but then she was rejected by the people who made her famous and was not allowed to continue so she had to make questionable choices just to, to put food on the table and to make money so we all make mistakes in life, no one is perfect, so I don't judge her for those mistakes. It's not like the mistakes she did hurt anybody, she was just trying to make money, you know. Uh, and she wasn't allowed to do what she wanted, and I just, years of, apparently she had a big alcohol problem that she mixed. Because she had depression and anxiety as well. She was on those medications and she was mixing alcohol with them. Uh, so apparently just years and years of doing that her heart just finally gave out and I just believe she died of a broken heart she went peacefully in her sleep no more tears she would make a lot of uh, well not a lot but she'd make a few YouTube, questionable YouTube videos where you could clearly tell she was out of it and, and I knew that watching them but I always watched because I was a faithful fan and um, it broke my heart to see some of those videos but I understood because I was there I self-medicated for years I didn't use alcohol. I would, uh, you know, I chose uppers because I always drank alcohol and became super sad and emotional to the point where uh, I was extra suicidal. So I knew alcohol and me did not mix. So I was always on the upper train. I was just trying to, you know, I figured alcohol makes you depressed. You know, I, I guess some people drink alcohol and get energy. I don't know how, but I guess everybody, their chemistry is different. So. Yeah, so alcohol was never for me. So I was on the upper train. But anyways, I know what it's like to self-medicate. Been there, done that. So, you know, that's why you didn't see another video about that. But little follow-up. If you want to know more about her story, just go online. Go to her Wikipedia page. Read about what um, people who knew her. Just go on YouTube. Search the videos of people who knew her. There's a guy named Vince Russo. Search in Vince Russo China Tribute if you want to hear more about her because he knew her personally. Really good friend of her. He did the best tribute video on YouTube. So if you want to know more, check that out. I will put a link to the that video in the description. And I will also put a link in the video. So somewhere in this video, probably um, above my finger here, you will see the annotation. Click on that if you want to see Vince Russo's video about her. So, yeah, I've made a video in a while, and there's reasons for that. And I even kind of elaborated on this slightly. There's only so many depression anxiety videos one can make. And so the thing with me years ago, I was like, does anybody make videos like these? And I didn't get many results, but there was one guy, my inspiration to these to make videos when I started was Donnie Miller. But over the years I've noticed eh, they're, they're more than there were four or five years ago when I was searching around for videos like this. But 
There's not enough. And the thing I always read in forums and posts, mental health, you know, places, well, because of their anxiety, they're too afraid to go on camera. I get that, but when you're on camera, you're in a room by yourself. And the argument is, well, people are going to watch, they're going to judge, you're going to put bad comments. Yes, that happens. But the power of YouTube, you can block them, people. You don't have to have them on your channel. Get rid of them. It's different than in real life when you walk into a situation and your anxiety's up and you walk in, you, you feel like the room, as soon as you enter that room, snap, every eye is on you, every eye is judging you. What I feel is I feel like everybody's laughing at me, putting me down, calling me a loser, calling me fat, calling me ugly, you know, wondering what the hell I'm doing there, that I have no business there, that I should be dead. Those are the thoughts that go through my head when I enter unfamiliar places. In those places, you can't click and block those people. But on YouTube, it's free to make an account and it's free to upload videos. And I urge anyone with mental illness to get your, if you have a camera, get it out. Make a video. You're in a room by yourself. You should be at your most comfortable because there's no one in here to judge you. And that camera, you can share your story with the world. So please. If you're holding back, if you're on the fence, jump over that fence. Because guess what? Yeah, you might get judged, and there might be some assholes that make some poor comments, but you have the power to get rid of them and you don't have to worry about them anymore. Share your story. Because we need more people to go on this uh, YouTube thing that has become... Basically, YouTube is like taking over for television people and I'm here to say that I would rather watch YouTube videos than regular television because guess what there are so many great people out there making great videos some you know produce these epic you know videos and some just sit and talk but there's great quality content and people on YouTube and I'd much rather sit and watch YouTube videos all day than try to flip through channels watching reruns or you know, these, these shows today just aren't as good as they were years ago. So times have changed, and I understand a topic like this. It's not going to bring in very many viewers, but trust me, there are people out there who are dealing with this that want to listen, want to, to know that there are people out there just like them that are going through similar situations that understand. They want to hear you. And so I urge you to make a video. Now, I don't make that many videos, and it's because I... I've been going through, you know, I've been you know, dealing with depression now for over 20 years, 21 years to be exact. Actually, 22 years this June is when I first realized I had depression. It was the summer of 94. And I can't believe it's been 22 years. And I can't believe I'm still alive because I told myself when I turned 12 in June 24th, 1994, that 20 years from now, if I'm still a loner, if I still have no friends, and if I haven't achieved my dream, I do not want to be living well, I came to that crossroads two years ago. And then I had a revolution earlier, late last year, I guess, that, you know what, even though my hope is slim of achieving these things in life, these simple things of friends, family, well, the family thing is, it's, well, actually, you know what, never mind. I can create my own family. So, friends, family, and love. If I do something stupid to myself, well, I'll never know if that ever happened. So even though hope is slim, I've got to stay alive to see. That's a good revelation that I had. But it's just like here the past four months, five months, I've been super, super depressed and out of it. And I don't feel right. I have no energy. Like I've had these issues on and off, but I would have ups and downs. But I've been in a constant, and usually it's like a three to four month period. Well, I'm in the fifth, fifth about fifth month now. This I'm hoping that I come up, but I just don't. I, something feels different about this depression period. Something just this is probably the worst depression period. I made a post about this on Facebook, and I'll put a link to that in below if you haven't seen it. Uh, but basically, I just 
tears well up so easily for me when I see things that I want and desire. And I've had this problem on and off, but here lately, it's more, you know, smaller things are making this happen. I'll be sitting on the city bus and see a couple, and they're doing their thing. And, uh, because, you know, in years past, I didn't ride the bus, so I was in my own vehicle. I wasn't around it as much. Now I'm around things like this more. I'm around pretty girls more. Uh, because I have to ride the bus. Are girls that I would be attracted to, but girls that would never ever give me the time of day based on experiences in my own life. And um, so being around it, and I have to ride the bus. I have to get around. I can't just sit in my house, be isolated. One, I have to get my medication daily. And two, I just can't isolate myself. I've done that. I just, I'm not going to. Now, I have options. I could bring my medicine, I could bring a month's supply of medication home where I only have to go out once a month, but I refuse. And I've been fighting that urge. I want to do that. And I'm close. I'm actually close to getting, you know, to that point, but I can't. I can't isolate myself again. I just, it's not the answer. But do I continue to keep going out and encountering these situations and getting super depressed, like coming home and instantly just, you know, dropping everything I've got, uh, taking my clothes off, getting into comfort mode, and just laying on the couch, putting on depressing, like, sad songs, or, you know, just some like, you know, just doing something depressing, because that's how I feel. And, you know, I, I read, you know, advice columns and such, and, you know, what to do when you're super depressed. And, you know, don't, it, it, one of the key things is don't do depressing things. Well, it's kind of hard when you're super, super depressed. And I will try to, like, I've always been a wrestling fan. People who follow me know that. I'll try to put on the WWE Network, watch some wrestling. That's not even helping anymore. Uh, I'll try to listen to some upbeat music. But the thing with upbeat music, uh, it, it's adding to the depression because a lot of the upbeat songs talk about living and being full of life, and I don't have that. I'm far from that. So it's just so much easier to turn on the depressing, sad music and cry. And I'm a man, and I'm not ashamed to admit that, and I do a lot of it. I also feel like my body is breaking down. I slowly, every day, I ache more, I get headaches more often, uh, like I said before, the worst level of energy I've had in my entire life, and yes, it could be something else wrong with me, but again, I don't like doctors, I don't like hearing bad news, and the last thing I want to do is go into a doctor and hear that it's not just the depression doing this to me, that something else is wrong with me. Because what that'll do is that'll just add to the depression. I don't want to add to the depression, and I know I need to go see a doctor. I don't have insurance, but it doesn't matter. There's a health clinic here that if you're like uh, very low income, like me, little to no income, you can go and they have a sliding pay scale, and the most that I would have to pay would be like $5 a month, 5 to $10 a month, which I can do. Um, but again, I don't. I don't do it because I don't want to know. Um, bad news. I've had so much of it in my life, I don't want it. Um, but my body is, is shutting down. And, uh, and the last thing to go is up here. And uh, in the Facebook post that I did, I talked about I was in a familiar area, a place that I've encountered all my life. And I was walking around in this area, and something had upset me that morning. Um, just one of those situations where I saw something that I wanted and I don't have and it just really triggered. I was really depressed. So I got off the bus and I, I've been doing a lot more walking. I'm actually, I guess a, a positive is I'm walking a little more. I'm, I want to, you know, get to a certain, you know, I, I want to lose a little bit of weight. I've always been a big guy and I want to get down to about 200 pounds, which is the average weight for someone of my height and my age. Um, my highest weight was 270 pounds, and that was last July. Um, I stepped on the scale earlier this week, 215 pounds. Should that make me happy? 
Yeah, but it didn't. But I guess the walking I'm doing is working. But anyways, so I was walking around in a familiar area, and I was really depressed, and I'm walking with my head down. And, you know, I do look for cars. I'm not that stupid, but, you know, when I'm not at an intersection having to look for a car, and I always walk to the far, you know, I walk towards oncoming, and it's far left. It's a sidewalk. I'm on that. If there's no sidewalk. I walk on the, uh, as far left as I can. But anyway, so my head's down, and I'm really depressed. So I look up, and I, I, I felt lost. Even though I was in a familiar area, I thought I was lost. I didn't recognize anything, but I was in a familiar area. And what's been happening to me recently is my mind I'm starting to forget a lot more. Things that I, I always had a sharp mind. I was always good with memory, but that's starting to slip. And that just that scared me. Like, wow, I'm in, I've been... Now, it didn't take me but a few seconds after I thought I was lost to recover and realize, hey, okay. But just the initial, like, I'm lost? I've walked this area, I've lived in this area all my life. I know where I'm at. That scared me. So, yeah, I probably should go see a doctor, but I don't want to hear any bad news. I've had enough bad news in my life. But, yeah, that's what's holding me back from making videos. But I wanted to make this video. I'm still here. I'm still alive. Just let you guys know what's going on. You know, an update video every now and then is not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, um, these batteries are about to die, my recording light's blinking, but it feels good to, to bend a little bit and get a little bit out there and just share some of what's going on with me. At times I miss it, but at times, you know, I'm just, I'll pull out the camera and I'll start to record, and I'll, I'll be five or so minutes into it, and I'm like, you know what, I'm just not feeling this, and I'll shut the camera off, but I got through a video here, yes! So you guys will see this. It's Monday. It'll be Monday when you see this. It's Sunday night right now, but I'm not uploading it until Monday because that's what's easier for me. And um, yeah, so um, just come across this video, you know, comment section down below. Tell me what you think about anything I've said. Yeah, any recommendations? You know, if you have been through this or going through this, hey, let me know. Um, I really, one of the things that I said in a few videos back is I would have loved to do more videos, but like I said, I'm super depressed, but when I do make one, I, I want to interact in the comment section. That's something that I really, really want to do. I want to have as many comments as possible. I want to be, you know, active in a particular video. When I make a video, I like to have that participation, and I didn't get that. You know, I don't get that in my videos, and it really bugs me. It's like... I don't get a lot of views. I average, I guess, 200 views a video, I guess, something like that. Not a lot, but out of 200 people who view my video, can't 50 to 60 of you comment and let's get a conversation going? And not just with me, with each other. Now, I would, I will always get rid of the hateful people, the trolls. They're gone. They're going to be blocked. So, just know when you're coming to my video, you may see, you know, I can't, like, it's not like I'm instantly going to be able to get to a comment, a bad comment, but just know for the most part, you're not going to have to worry about trolls, you know, bothering you. And yes, again, they may make a poor comment and you may, you may read it. And I apologize for that, but I will always get rid of them, always blog. And just know that my comment section, for the most part, I want people to speak their piece, but there is a limit. And especially with the type of people that I'm bringing in, it's people with, you know, mental issues, you know, and they're sensitive to hate. I don't want that in my channel, so I will always do my best to get rid of those people as fast as I can. So, yeah, so I just, hopefully I can get some conversations started. And I'll tell you this, um, if this video does good in the comment section and a, a good weeks to two weeks worth of conversation can be brought from this video, maybe, just maybe, that'll be what I need. Because if I feel like I'm making these videos and they actually mean something and they're actually doing something productive, maybe that'll help even as depressed as I am. That could actually help lift me up a little bit. Hey, wait a minute. My video actually got good, positive, you know, a comment, you know, conversation going basically. And that's what I wanted. And hey, there's a week, two weeks worth of good conversation going between me and others and other people are interacting with each other and meeting others that's the goal I want people like us and if you don't have mental illness or just curious to know what someone with mental illness how they 
you know, some of their stories or what have you. Whatever reason brings you here, my goal is to bring us together. We need to unite because nobody understands our struggle but us and even outsiders. Hey, outsiders who don't have any issues but for whatever reason stumble across these types of videos, maybe it will help them to understand what we're going through a little more and that is a positive. The biggest thing we can do is to get people who don't understand to start understanding because that's the one of the biggest issues. People just don't understand except for those who go through it but those who go through it you know it's kinda hard for us to, to get, get to each other because of our issues because of what we've been through but I firmly believe if we just give it a chance with people who understand each other and then bring in these outsiders and help them to understand we could do something huge for the mental community I made a video a long time ago that it's time for us to unite and we do we have to unite so anyways that's it that's all I thank anyone who watches this video, and like I said, if I, the comment section if it's productive for the next week or two, maybe that'll be a boost to help me want to do more videos and bring me out of this funk. Hey, I'm looking for whatever can help. Um, and if, like the main reason is I feel like this is it's like I'm making a video and you know I'm not getting 10 or 15, 20 comments, you know, because I'm looking for 100 comments. That's not too much to ask for. I'm looking for good conversation. That's not too much to ask for. So. Well, my battery's died, so uh, I'm not an editing master. I mean, I can edit videos to a certain extent, but, you know, there's no way that I am good enough to be able to, you know, put in new batteries, record a small bit, and put it in to the other recording to where you had no idea that the batteries died, like it was seamless. I'm not good at doing that. Maybe I'll work on that, but just letting you guys know, I was ending the video anyway, so if the video is productive you know I'm not asking for a lot you know 100 comments 50 you know I was saying I was after like 10 15 20 50 comments you know I just want to know that I'm making these videos for a reason and that's one of the biggest issues I feel like I'm just doing this for nothing like I'm just sitting in a room talking I want I know I'm asking for a lot because these videos are not entertaining. It's just me talking. But you know what? I know for a fucking fact there's more than 200 people. Well, I've got 500 subscribers. But I average 200 to 250 views per video. And I know that there's more than 500 people and 200 to 250 people watching that have issues and would like to hear other people's stories. So I don't know where you're at and I don't know how to draw you in. But I've drawn in 500, and I draw in an average of 200 to 250 views. I want to bump that up, you know. I know mental illness in this country is a huge topic, but it's a boring topic, I suppose. But guess what? For years and years, we have listened to people talk, whether it's radio, whether it's TV, whether it's on YouTube. There are tons of people just sit and talk. Maybe the topic is not the most interesting, but we need a leader. And yes, there are people out there that are bigger than me, you know, that do make mental health videos. I get that. But what I see in those people is I don't see, I see, what I see in those people is people that, that have, I'm not trying to judge anyone, but yes, they, they may have issues, but they're not severe. I want to be the spokesperson for the people with severe mental illness. They may have it, but to me, there's as mild compared to me and compared to others. I want to be the spokesman, spokesperson for the severely mentally troubled and uh, we need a spokesman. And in order for me to become that, one, yeah, I guess I have to make more videos, but two, I need people to watch and to show me, hey, we, we hear you. We like what you're saying. And even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, that's perfectly fine. Again, no really like hateful trolling type shit because I'm not going to have that. But you don't always have to agree with everything. If you disagree and it, you know, um, in a manner that is, um, that is, uh, how am I going to put this? It's okay to disagree, but constructive criticism, not bashing and hating on someone's ideologies. We don't want that here. We want I want to bring together the people who are severely troubled 
and I want us to unite and I want us to kick this shit in the ass and I want us to actually enjoy life because we have never or have barely enjoyed life and it's time for us to turn that around and start living because this is life and it's oh so short and for a lot of us we have suffered for many many years and not lived for many many years and I have not lived in over 20 going on 22 years I've just existed and I want to live before it's too late so uh, that's it and that's all and uh, like I was getting to yeah if I want to become the spokesperson I need to make more videos but that's not going to happen if people don't show support um, not demanding I'm just saying hey look I know there has to be more people out there it's just bringing us together and uh, if I can just keep this depression in the ass, you know, I have so many things that I want to do. YouTube, it seems to be, it's a job these days. YouTube is, is pain. Like I said, YouTube is like taking over TV. And right now it's free. And anybody can make videos. Yeah, it takes time to become like a YouTube partner and, and get paid. But I am. I'm a YouTube partner. I am monetized, okay? I can make money. It's just I don't generate enough views and I've been monetized since 2013 actually no since the summer of 2014 so going on two years I've been monetized two years and in two years I've only earned just under fifty dollars and that's not a lot um, but I can see YouTube being something I want to do for a living and I'm not you know naive to think I'm going to be one of these YouTubers that make you know hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe millions of dollars a year I would just like to make, you know, four to five hundred dollars a month. That would be enough to help me live, to help me, you know, survive. You know, I'm not asking for hundreds of thousands, thousands even. I'm four to five hundred dollars a month would be awesome. And you don't have to have a huge subscriber account. You just need to basically with YouTube, the thing is likes, dislikes, and it's not even the amount of views. It's the amount of likes and dislikes. When you like and dislike a video, that sh generates interest, and it shows these advertisers that hey, wait, this particular video, people are rating this thing. It's like a TV show. When you rate a TV show, that lets you know the producers and the, the big wigs and these you know television companies know if this show works or not. That's how really YouTube is. There's more to it, but I used to always think you have to have a ton of subscribers and a ton of views. No, the likes and dislikes or what generates the advertisers because when a video is getting rated the advertisers want to put their ads on that because that means that video is generating the interest and uh... you know like I said I know my topic is, is is boring and not entertaining but you gotta start somewhere you know it can be official um, I think I posted this somewhere too maybe oh yeah in that documentary I posted that was an old documentary that I liked and I felt as though you know what I'm not trying to make money off that video that video was not monetized I don't own that video I just felt like because my channel deals with mental illness that would be a good documentary to put on my channel even though it's kind of outdated and old still that's a good thing to put on a channel like mine and I would love to even though I have social anxiety, I think I can I can pull this off. If, one, well, I gotta get out of this depression period, and two, I gotta you know generate a little bit more following. But to interview people who are severely troubled and dealing with the issues, and put together just a documentary of real people struggling who just want to live. Put a documentary together of us, tell our stories, express how misunderstood we are, how the stigma that people, when you hear mental illness, you immediately think of, of someone who is uh, going to like hurt you and, and kill you and, and, and is going to terrorize. No, that's because the media, every time somebody does something like that, they point to mental illness. And most of the time, yeah, maybe those people do have it, but just because if that particular person went crazy, doesn't mean we all are. There are a lot of great people with these issues that are just misunderstood and troubled and just looking for someone
to understand them and bring out the best in them. But they can't do that if people continue to put them down, reject them, you know, basically throw them away. They're just looking for a chance. There are a lot of great people with great minds, great hearts, that contribute a lot to society but aren't able to because they mis I, I, I sum it all up to just it's a misunderstood. Yeah, we do have issues, but we're not all crazy. And anyways, every time I do this in most of my videos, every time I'm about to end it, I continue to rant. Um, I had no idea I was gonna make a video this long, um, but hey, my first one in a while. My first like true traditional sitting down making a video. So anyways. This is really it, and then this is really all for this video. I thank you for entering the alone zone and taking time out of your precious day to spend a few minutes with me. It means a lot to me, and uh, I can tell I've talked too long because I'm starting to get a little bit of a dry throat, and my voice is starting to fade out a little bit. I don't know if the camera can pick it up, but I can clearly hear it. So, if everything goes well, um, you may see more of me. So until next time, peace.